got enough time to think about it. Life's not gonna get me down. There's nothing can stop me. Gonna make it in this town. I've got a rainbow in my pocket. I've got a dream that just won't die. I've got money my parents gave me. So it's about time I learn. In September 1987, the Archbishop of Canterbury's special envoy, Terry Waite, got himself kidnapped by Shiite Muslim militants. Honestly, some people will do anything to avoid doing jury service. <laughs> some people theorise, though, that Terry Waite was actually a dupe of the Americans, of the CIA. I think that's true. I mean, American foreign policy has often been malevolent. I mean, after all, what was America's first gift to the world? Smoking. <laughs> but now the American State Department, they support all these really cruel, repressive regimes like in Southeast Asia, you know, regimes like Indonesia. Why? I mean, what are these regimes doing that's so good? All they're doing is like trying to get prosperity so they can repeat the same mistakes that the West made in the 50s and 60s. Like every tin pot town in Southeast Asia, right, has got to have a revolving restaurant. A revolving restaurant. Every town, that is, except for Singapore, where the restaurant stays still and the whole island revolves around. <laughs> I mean, what is the deal with revolving restaurants? You know, like, in the 60s, you know, I mean, why were they so trendy, you know? I mean, actually, spooky. Liverpool had a revolving restaurant, right? And it ground to a halt on the very day that John Lennon was shot. Actually, that's a load of crap. It ground to a halt on the day it opened, like all the bloody revolving restaurants. It was a really big thing in the 60s, wasn't it? And people were saying, oh, it's fab groovy to eat your dinner while it's going round. Oh, this is a really sophisticated experience. Or maybe, right, in the 60s, everybody had taken so many drugs that the only way they could feel normal was if the restaurant was going round and round. And maybe in the restaurants that were actually screwed to the ground, everybody was going, whoa, whoa, whoa. My dinner often feels like it's going round and round. But that's cos I'm pissed. <laughs> Bloody hell, Madonna! Madonna, man! Darling! Darling! Over here! Madonna! Over here, darling! Darling, Madonna! 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 Could you just take your kit off, man? <laughs> kit off and stand by the side of the road as if you're hitchhiking. Lovely! Well done. <laughs> Seems to be the trouble officer. Could I see your license, sir? <sighs> and the name is? Um, Goddo. Mr. Goddo. No, no, just Goddo. One word, you know, like Maradona. So why were you speeding, sir? Well, uh, there's some people waiting for me. <laughs> uh, they've been waiting rather a long time. <laughs> I said I'd meet them yesterday. Where are these people, sir? Uh, they're on a road that leads to nowhere, but which crosses a blasted barren landscape. What, like the M25? Yeah, sort of, yeah. yeah. I'm just a bit worried, though, you know, cos uh, if I don't get to see them soon, I think they'll probably ricochet between elation and despair and cause the barriers <laughs> of drama to be really fine. What? Well, I can't. Excuse me a moment, sir. Go on, get on the radio. OK. Hi. 
We're back. And this next one's for the Croydon Posse at Avon Plastics. I'm afraid we can't let you continue in this car. You've no brake lights. And your tyre tread depths do not conform to EC safety standards, I'm afraid. Well, what am I to do? You have to leave the car here, sir. Now, I'm going to give you a ticket. I'm going to give you a ticket for an inspector calls at the library theatre staff. <laughs> now, be off with you. I went house hunting the other day with my girlfriend. We shot two semis and an ender terrace. <laughs> yeah, people often accuse comedy shows, such as this one, of using canned laughter, a pre-recorded laugh track that we just dub on every time we think the audience at home can be fooled into thinking they've just heard a really good joke. Well, I can assure you that an organisation such as the BBC would never consider that kind of action. So, I'm standing in the middle of a field. And yet, you just heard laughter. How do we do it? Well, it's a simple little trick of the trade. And this is how it's done. Bobby, they're ready for you. Good, good, good. Bloody sod you then. <laughs> Bobby Shelley is here, soft walk, and here to keep you smiling and laughing, even though we're there. Sitting in the middle of this field, you know, while they're changing the film or something. As you can see, I'm still living in my jag because I'm separated from my wife. It's got its advantages and its disadvantages, you know. The advantages are like, it's not far for me to come to work. Come down far. <laughs> disadvantages are that I live a life of utter privation, only comparable with that of a 14th century Cistercian monk. <laughs> only what you remember from school, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, I've just got out of the hospital, you know. Yeah. I was in there because I was badly beaten up. Well, that's a stupid thing today, isn't it? Badly beaten up. If I'd been badly beaten up, I wouldn't have been in hospital. I was well beaten up. I mean, if I'd been badly beaten up, then they would have hit me with, uh, you know, stuffed squirrels or something. The fact is, I was well beaten up, and they hit me with iron bars. You know, I mean, if I'd been badly beaten up, then they would have just rubbed me lightly with some toffee creams or a pack of thousand mints or something. It's like they're repeatedly kicking me in the head, kicking me, kicking me, kicking me. While I screamed, it's all right, I'll put the woman's lingerie back on the line, but they wouldn't listen. You know. <laughs> I'd say it's a roving life, uh, living in your jag, you know. It reminds me of that Paul Young song, actually, you know, because I'm always moving about my jag. It reminds me of that marvellous Paul Young song. Whenever I lay my hat, that's where my hat is. <laughs> Two drunken Englishmen are accidentally sucked into an ever-changing vortex of past and future ages. <laughs> Doug Hatton and Tony Kirby out a change of clothes in several months, now tumble helplessly towards an exciting new adventure along the infinite corridors of time. <laughs> Tremble, my friend, for it is I, Genghis Khan, Emperor of Charisma and most of what is now known as modern China. <laughs> Ever since you conquered most of the territory between the Black Sea and the Pacific Ocean, you've been torturing people left, right and centre! Yes, I love to torture people left, right and centre. It gives me a big, stiff one. <laughs> <laughs> In time. This week, Kababarama drama. Do you know what this is, General? How do I know what this is? I'm a soldier, not some dumb two bit in out shake it all about three times around the block, <laughs> back to my mother's place, dollar and dime, freeway express old convict, seeing his girlfriend twice at weekends through the metal grill with the folds on either side, chewing tobacco, southern redneck. You ain't from around these parts, are you? 
cup expert? It's a simple cup of coffee. I'm going to send it back through the tunnel. It might sober up our boys. And look at these bricks, they're useless. And you, where's that cup of coffee you said you'd get me? And why haven't you started on that wall over there? There's no point in running off. Oh, it's true what they say, isn't it? You should never work with children and animals. <laughs> <laughs> this is nice, isn't it? You know, when somebody has their name on a bench, it actually means that they're buried underneath it. <laughs> That's sort of ecological, isn't it, really? And recently, I've actually become a green consumer. Hmm? Which means I only drink washing up liquid. <laughs> I do like a drink, though. I'm not the kind of celebrity who only travels in limousines. No, I travel on buses and I visit pubs. In fact, I'm so dedicated, I sometimes visit 16 or 17 pubs in a night. <laughs> I hate it, though, in a pub when, you know, like, violence breaks out. I hate it when a normal, nice evening in the pub, drinking 27 or 28 Malibu and Cokes and spewing the sanya on people's shoes, suddenly turns nasty. <laughs> well, friends of mine have actually stopped drinking. have become very puritanical about it. I, I can't see the attraction in stopping drinking. Now. I mean, what kind of stories will you have to tell, you know? Oh, we went out last night and got really sober. <laughs> Oh, you're not my best friend. I'm not going to sing a song now. <laughs> I disagree. You'd be surprised at what money can do. Not everything's for sale. Hmm. But look at me. You see that stereo? I'm so rich, I don't have a CD player. I've got a record player. <laughs> well, let's test the cliché. What would you say if I were to offer you a million dollars for... <laughs> for a ride on your bicycle? <laughs> I'd assume that you were kidding. <laughs> let's pretend I'm not. What would you say? Million dollars buys a lot of bicycle clips. I tell you to go to hell. <laughs> Think about it. I'm in the book.
Here, how you diddling? Bloody sod you then. Still on pills for me nerves, you know, still separated from the wife and kids and all that, you know. Yeah. Oh, I think back though, you know, you always remember, don't you, the tune that was playing the first time you asked a girl to dance. Unfortunately, in my case, it was the theme music from Doctor Who. <laughs> Still, negotiations have broken down between me and my wife, you know. I suppose it's partly because I'm a bit of a one for the ladies, you know. And, uh, you know, while I was married, right, I was going out with this page three girl. Page three girl. Page three of the Argos catalogue. <laughs> yeah, she was photographed standing next to a kind of, uh, you know, polyurethane compost compactor, you know. <laughs> Turned me on. <laughs> my wife's very disappointed, woman, my wife, very disappointed, you know. I suppose, really, she would have liked to have been known in the local papers as wife of successful local comedian Bobby Chariot, you know, instead of wife of local man who exposed himself to the Pope. <laughs> Student, then? Uh, well, um, I'm an elusive figure. I, I, I travel, but I don't necessarily arrive. I may not exist. My friends, who may not be my friends, they constantly bicker, always intending to move, but never moving, putting everything off until tomorrow. Sounds like a student to me. <laughs> Where are you meeting these mates of yours? Uh, well, I'm meeting Vladimir and Estragon on a road to nowhere, underneath an oak tree. I'm terribly late, you know, awfully late, and I'm worried that if I don't get there soon, they may lapse into nihilistic despair. I'm gonna give them a bell on the mobile. I don't think they've got a mobile. <laughs> Everybody's got a mobile, mate. <coughs> oh, car behind. Cavalier. Headlamp washes. Colour coded bumpers. Christ, it's a 2.5 V6 Diplomat Special Edition. <laughs> Leather seat facings and optional passenger airbag. Senior regional managers and above. Damn! Well, I'm only a two-litre SRI, you know. Senior reps, planning managers, heads of personnel, electric front windows, but no bloody CD. Damn, 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 damn! <laughs> come on, come on. Go on. Yeah, you want to give my bell on the old mobilo? Oh, another cavalier. Black bumpers. No rear wash wipe. Ah, <laughs> black exhaust smoke. <laughs> it's a 1.7D Envoy. <laughs> Wind up windows and no ABS. Junior reps, assistant computer programmers, and below. <laughs> There's no way you're passing me, mate. You can forget it. <laughs> oh, he's flashing his lights. Piss off! <laughs> Diesel, no fuel injection. <laughs> oh, police car. Box all carton. Two meter out. I'm not moving over for that. <laughs> what use is your education to you? I mean, I can remember at school. Like, in physics, we used to have to learn all these laws. We had to learn all these laws, like, um, the first law of mechanics. Don't you know if you remember the first law of mechanics, but it goes, nah, mate, nah, <laughs> so you have to send to Nairobi for the parts, mate. No, I can't fix it in that colour, mate. It sends me insane. Nah, nah. <laughs> But despite my lack of education, I've decided to get much more serious about my career because disaster can strike at any moment. For example, recently a friend of mine, they took £500,000 off him because he was a name at Lloyd's. It's a good job they didn't have his address as well. <laughs> One of the first things you've got to do when you become successful in show business, though, is 
You've got to give your first wife, the wife who supported you through the early years, you've got to give her the elbow. And you've got to get in a second wife, what they call a trophy wife. They're called that because they've got handles on the side and you can carry them round Wembley, you know, like that. If you ever have to go to court, say, in connection with the rarely used laws concerning impersonating a Chelsea pensioner in an obscene fashion, something that's not happened to me as often as the papers say, <laughs> then when you go to court, your lawyer tells you to get your hair cut and to buy a smart suit and wear a nice tie. Because apparently the judge's idea of an innocent person is somebody who spent 600 quid in top shop. <laughs> it's wrong, isn't it? I mean, it's your actions that are being judged, not your dress sense. I mean, you should be able to go to court wearing your underpants on your head or dressed as a chicken. And it shouldn't affect the outcome. So ten years in prison for not having a dog licence is a bit strong, really, isn't it? <laughs> It wasn't even a real dog. It was just like a squeezy bottle with pipe cleaners for legs and an orange for a head. I think I was fitted up. Another thing you've got to do, though, when you're a successful entertainer, what you've got to have, you've got to have your own charity. Because that can really help your career if you've got your own charity. I mean, the way it's turned out, it seems as if Comic Relief was a charity set up by the poor and the homeless to help the careers of ambitious young comedians. <laughs> the other thing that you've got to have these days in show business, you've got to have plastic surgery. And I have to admit that I recently have had plastic surgery. Yeah. Recently, I had a penis reduction operation. <laughs> oh, you know, it was just getting embarrassing, you know. I mean, I was just knocking stuff over. I mean, I couldn't go to the kind of Ming vase collection at the British Museum, you know. It's like... <laughs> If I went to the opera, I was just poking, you know, poking the opera singer's eyes out. <laughs> 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 Oh, hi. Welcome to Menstrual Cycles, Britain's first all-women bicycle shop and drop-in coffee bar. All right. I'm Nancy, this is Spite, and you're watching Hackney Community Cable TV. And we're talking about the problems of bike maintenance and being a lesbian in the modern world, cos, uh, We're lesbians! <laughs> Except... Some of us haven't tooled our mums yet. Yeah, well, no, listen, I am getting round to it, right? I said to my mum the other day, right, Mum, you know that Cindy Crawford? Well, I am exactly like her. But my mum didn't understand, cos she goes, uh, I don't think Cindy Crawford's got an enormous bottom, darling. <laughs> anyway, though, we do, we fearlessly declare ourselves. We say, we're, we're lesbians! lesbians. <laughs> Anyway, this week we'd like to talk about lesbian footwear in the 90s, breaking away from brogues. Actually, no, traitor sister woman. I'd like to talk about the huge number of men that were seen leaving your house yesterday evening. What is going on? I was holding open auditions, all right? Eh? Well, listen, like, me and my girlfriend, we're thinking of having a baby, right? So we were auditioning men, cos uh, apparently I've got to have sex with them. No, you don't have to have sex with them. You could have the baby via UVF. Oh, UVF? Aren't they a Protestant terrorist group? <laughs> yeah, that's right. These loyalist gunmen come round to your house, right? And they do the job with a turkey baster. <laughs> no, I don't think I fancy that. No, you see, I, w I want a bloke, right, who's kind, considerate, intelligent, loyal, faithful... Nancy, 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 Nancy. Yeah. You're talking about a bloke, are you? Because <laughs> I tell you, the only thing I know that has a penis and has those qualities is me Auntie Rita's border collie. <laughs> well, all right, maybe I was being a little bit overambitious, but, um... Oh, I know, I could find a gay bloke, right? A gay bloke would fit those qualities, wouldn't he? Oh, no, but then the baby might be bald and have a moustache and really, really like erasure. Yeah, it's weird, that, isn't it? You know how a lot of gay guys are bald? Yeah. Is it something they do with their heads, or...? <laughs> anyway, we've got to go now. Coming up next on Hackney Community Cable, it's the Cantonese Country and Western Hour. Oh. <laughs> Respect, Nancy. Respect back at you, Spy. <laughs> Easter is perhaps the most solemn of Christian festivals. And we celebrate it in this country by going, It 
it's Mr. Cadbury's parrot. <laughs> Parrot isn't a real person, though. You know. Sorry to tell you that, but he's just a cartoon figure thought up by a cynical corporation in order to try and personalise their products, you know. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of them about, you know, like Mr Kipling or Captain Birdseye. Mind you, some of these people are real. Like, most people know that Colonel Sanders is actually a real Southerner. And also, Ronald McDonald is actually a real person as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, sadly, he used to be quite a handsome man, you know. Yeah, but unfortunately, he was hideously scarred in an accident when he got too close to the electrical mains while taking part in a wet underpants contest. <laughs> That's why he looks like that. Yeah. Maybe, uh, you know, people that make really dangerous stuff could actually personalise their products as well. Like, you go, hey, look, it's our friend, Mr Asbestos. <laughs> or you could have uh, Donald McGenetically Engineered Duck. <laughs> As the mayor of Sellafield always says, two heads are better than one. Let's go far away from it. We can't. Why not? We have to come back tomorrow. What for? To wait for Godo. <laughs> he didn't come. No. And now it's too late. Lads, lads, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. Sorry to keep you waiting. Sorry to keep you waiting, lads. <sighs> anyway, I'm here, so. Shall we push off? Hey? <laughs> oh. Oh, sorry to keep you waiting, lads. <laughs> I'm totally time getting here. Anyway, I'm here now and I've got some tickets for the wrestling, so uh, shall we go? What? Aye, <laughs> right, lads. Oh, you'll never believe the time when I get in here. Oh, sorry to keep you waiting. Anyway, fancy a drink? <sighs> Typical. You wait ages for one to come along and suddenly <laughs> three come up at once. Um, um, excuse, excuse me, love. Um, excuse me. Um, is it uh, true that, uh, you know, you're one of them, uh, lesbians? Which lesbians? All lesbians. Are you one of them all lesbians? And what if I am? Well, I'll tell you what, love. I'll tell you what, lad. I bet if you ever met a real man, he'd soon put you back on the straight and narrow. Oh, yeah, like who? I'll give you the clue. All right. You're standing not a million miles away from him. So that's every bloke within a radius of a million miles. What's that? About two million? No, 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 no. No, what I mean is, like, every bloke within a radius of, like, six feet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see no one. <laughs> you? Why do you think lesbians exist? It's cos of men like you. I would rather be burnt alive than have you touch me, you prize-winning crack. You've still got it, Bobby Mace. <laughs>